In this demo, I'm going to show you how to create a business process in Lynx Business Integrator. Lynx Business Integrator is a .NET-based integration framework for JD Edwards Enterprise One. This product has achieved Oracle validated integration for JD Edwards Enterprise One releases 9.2 and 9.1, and Microsoft Platform Readiness for Windows Server 2008, SQL Server 2008, and Office 2010. This process flow shows you how external applications can easily exchange data with Enterprise One. All information is exchanged in XML format. The core of the integration is a business process which runs on top of Enterprise One's application layer. A Lynx business process consists of two components, an XML schema and a .NET library created in C-sharp using Visual Studio 2010. The XML schema validates the input document and the .NET library contains the logic for the business process. You can call business functions and reports, execute table I.O., attach media objects, and include transactions in Lynx business processes. In this demo, we are creating a business process to create address book records in Enterprise One. The input consists of address book information in XML format, and the output will be address book number assigned by Enterprise One using next numbers. The business process will call the address book master business function to do this. The development process consists of three steps. First, the Enterprise One objects needed to create the integration are compiled into a .NET assembly. This allows the business process to seamlessly access these objects through the application layer. Next, an XML schema is created to validate the input document. An XML schema is a standard way to validate XML documents. You don't have to learn a new programming language or create custom logic to do the validation. Lastly, you create the programming language for the integration using Lynx.NET API. Now I'll start by creating the class library for the Enterprise One objects used for this integration. As you can see, the address book business function and the FO101 table have been included to create the class library. Let's take a moment to examine the outputs created by this tool. The tool creates sample code to use the Enterprise One objects in your integration. The sample code can be cut and pasted into your business process. The tool also creates schema snippets that can be used to build and extend the XML schema. We are now ready to create the business process in Visual Studio. The project can be created using the links.net business process template, which is part of the development toolset. This creates a C-sharp class library project. The project contains skeleton code for the class, which will implement the business process, a base XML schema, and a sample document for testing and debugging. I'm now adding a reference to the .NET library we created earlier to use in this process. When I browse the classes in the reference library, I can see the address book master business functions and its parameters. You can also see the detailed description of each parameter in the object browser. Let's take a look at the c -sharp code in the project. This is a c -sharp class that implements the I integration process interface. The class has one public method called process document. This method is called by the Lynx integration server when a document is submitted to the web service for this business process. Here, we can use the address book business function, set its parameter values, and execute it. As I type the code, you can see how the documentation of the Enterprise One objects assists you in writing the code. Let's flip over to the XML schema and take a look at it. This schema needs to be extended to validate the specific requirements 
for this business process. Here is the modified schema for this business process. You can see that it mirrors our requirements for the input document. The schema dictates that the input document must contain the address book information we are expecting. It also dictates the data types of the specific input elements in the XML document. Switching back to the code, you can see that I renamed the class to address demo and specified this class to implement the erp.e1.demo1 business process. This is the integration ID for this business process. The integration ID is specified in the input document and it allows us to target the business process in the web service request. I also changed the code to call the address book business function. We'll take a look at the code when we debug this business process. Let's take a look at the sample document. The document contains address book information in the format that we're expecting. Note that the input document contains a process settings element that specifies the integration ID. I can now set the input document and validate it from the alias links menu in Visual Studio. This custom menu is part of the development toolset. Validation errors are displayed in the output window. If I make a change to render the XML document invalid, validation errors are displayed in Visual Studio itself. When I revalidate the document from the alias links menu, a linked task is created. This points to the exact location of the validation error. We can now debug this business process. You can set breakpoints and struct through the code to debug the code. process completed and the output document is displayed. You can see the assigned address book number in the output document. When I go into Enterprise 1 and key in the address number, you can see that it has been successfully created. In the next demo, we'll show you how to deploy this business process to the server and call it from our web service. Please contact us at alias.com for more information on our products and services. Thank you for your time.